Good morning, it's uh, 10 o'clock now as we can start. We're going to have a session this morning with Dave Pearson, uh, who's just finished a book. He wrote a book and it got released early this year, uh, Standard Definitions for Water Losses, which was quite difficult to do, taking in mind everywhere across the world and every, everybody has different definitions. So we'll hand across to Dave and Dave can give us his story of, of uh, his sleepless nights of trying to get this past everybody from uh, around the world and the team. So I hand it across to Dave. Okay, Dave, thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, good morning to everyone that's in the UK. Uh, I think it's good afternoon to those that are in the Far East. Uh, or is it, um, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, so, welcome to this. So, as Stuart says, it's about um, the book that was written and published just at, uh, just in time for World Water Loss Day in December last year, uh, called Standard Definitions for Water Losses. Um, so I'm just going to cover the editorial panel that we had, uh, the structure, uh, getting the book and using the book online. So the editorial panel, uh, basically the request came in to me from Stuart, who has introduced the session this morning, uh, and he gave me a starter for 10, which was about, probably about 10 definitions. Uh, and said, can you work this up a bit further? Uh, we're now up to 80 pages, I think it is, or 90 pages. Uh, we set up a small team. The editor was Andrew Donnelly, uh, based in Lisbon. And we had an editorial panel of 12 people uh, that are listed there, covering uh, most places in the world. Um, the, that, uh, the editorial panel was used to suggest topics, so uh, I would get suggestions from them. I suggest we have a definition on so-and-so, please include this, please include that. Um, ideas on the layout and approach to the uh, book. And then they were also involved in reviewing uh, my draft definitions when I came out with the draft. and. Uh, we would bounce them out. So the, and the definitions and the drafts were circulated for comment. Um, and then uh, if we ended up with any sort of semi-contentious issues, then we actually ran a voting system uh, if we couldn't get unanimous agreement, which occasionally happened. Um, just to give you an idea of the structure, uh, it starts with some ancillary information. Uh, originally, I didn't realize that I was going to include these, but it, as the book developed, we felt that it, it would be advantageous and that, so that it included acronyms. That was, that's fairly common when we do uh, a book, uh, which we'll come on to some standard abbreviations and some standardization of units. So there's tables of abbreviations and tables of units. And also a uh, table for abbreviations for standard pipe materials. The main body of the book, uh, one of the main debates to start with is should it be alphabetic and you could perhaps call it a dictionary then or should it be actually orientated around chapters. Uh, in developing the book it was easier to develop it around chapters and then we, when we debated whether we should then have it totally changed to become alphabetic it was decided to keep it as chapters. Uh, one kind person in the editorial panel ha had the idea of having it totally hyperlinked, which at the time I had no idea what that meant and involved, uh, but now I'm a world expert on hyperlinking Word documents. Uh, it is, in fact, a very useful function. It means that 
anywhere in the text. It's the sort of thing that you see now quite often on uh, text on, say, news feeds and things like that. Uh, anything that's highlighted, in this case in blue and underlined, you can click on it and it will jump from where it is to where that is in the document and give you the definition of that word. Um, then at the end of the document is an alphabetical index of all the definitions that are in the book. Um, and those are hyperlinked back to the position in the main document. And then if there were alternative terms, uh, which was fairly common, uh, those were referenced in the alphabetical list and then hyperlinked to, to the agreed term in the document. Um, it was agreed that we, uh, well, Stuart, in fact, started off right at the beginning with some uh, illustrations and figures to help illustrate the definition. So we continued that and we also uh, had photographs, which was a severe problem. I have to say, I didn't think it was going to be uh, as difficult as it was. Um, but com uh, including photographs was a major problem in the document because uh, IWA Publishing needed to ensure that I had been assigned the copyright for those photographs. So you can't pick up photographs from the internet. I mean, there you can go on the internet and you can browse images and find thousands of hundreds of photographs of burst mains but you can't use any of those. So I had to uh, use colleagues within the industry that I knew, uh, or companies, uh, wrote to quite a lot of companies and said, would you like to include a photograph of your pressure management valve, say, pressure reduce valve, uh, and we will give you uh, full credit within the document for it. So that was, uh, in the end, uh, quite a relatively long process and a bit tortuous uh, and it may be that it, in the longer term we may want further photographs in there. Um, where, wherever I was con constrained by my colleagues on the editorial panel to, to try and stop thinking in England and think international. So uh, that was quite difficult for me, um, being true born and bred in, in England, uh, brought up with the English definitions and uh, terminology. So I had to be weaned off quite a lot of that. Well, the document starts with a, a list of acronyms, uh, which is uh, a word or name formed from the initial components of the longer name, uh, usually involving the initial letters. And we do tend to go for three letter acronyms, TLAs, uh, but we do have, occasionally we have uh, slightly longer ones or shorter ones. But we certainly love them when we uh, have developed them. So, uh, so for instance, PRV for pressure reducing valve. Uh, and once we get used to them, they roll off our tongues and we use them really ad nauseum when we're doing presentations and discussions between ourselves, etc. And unfortunately, it can be confusing for people who are new into the industry. So um, we ought to be a bit careful like when I'm doing anything, I try and say at the beginning, if I use an acronym, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, and you don't know what it stands for, just stop me and I will explain it. So uh, the, the glossary has about 80 acronyms and the list is still growing. Uh, units, uh, there are two or three tables in, in there. The standard symbols for things like uh, little m for thousands, uh, capital M for million, K for a thousand, um, things like that. 
Um, wherever possible, I've followed the SI units, but it's not always been possible. It was interesting that quite a, some areas are not covered by SI units. Um, so uh, there's G for gallons rather, rather than capital G. Litre is a bit odd. Awkward, really. I personally would prefer to small a small letter L, but unfortunately, SI units actually allow you small L or capital L. Uh, but I, it, I recommended the small L. Uh, there's one or two recommendations like don't use S for plurals. So, for instance, seven centimeters is seven cm, not. 7 CMS. Uh, no spaces between the numbers and the uh, abbreviation. And uh, recommendation that you use a slash or solidus, which is the proper name for it, uh, rather than per. So, so we end up with, uh, for example, there, megalitres per day is capital M, small l, slash D. Um, so we struggled, uh, the Americans seem to love all sorts of very peculiar units and it would be really nice to convert them into metric but somehow or other I don't think Mr Trump will do that. Um, so we have things like uh, CCF for uh, 100 cubic feet and AF for acre feet. Uh, beautiful unit is acre feet. Uh, it's the volume of one foot uh, of, say, rain, because it was actually mainly derived by hydrologists, one foot of rain on one acre of land. Uh, so uh, we've tried to standardize, so we've got and some of these did involve the, um, the voting system between us. So Y half a year um, rather than A, uh, which stands for annum, which is common in some uh, branches of science and engineering. So we end up, as I said earlier, with MLD for rather capital M, small l, oblique slash D rather than capital M, capital L, capital D, small m, which would be milliliters per day, or a D. Uh, um, so all the variants that I have seen on various tables and things like that, really we should try and standardize uh, down to the recommended units. Uh, meter cubed uh, rather than CUM uh, is a small m with the superscript 3. Um, HD for household and not head. C is for capita instead of head or person, uh, i.e. a head or a person. H for hour rather than HR. Uh, I also decided to put in a table for abbreviation for pipe materials. It's a bit of a little bone of my own, uh, is this, because I, I've seen various GIS systems, which are very common in the industry, where there's a whole plethora of uh, abbreviations used for different pipe materials. And one of the most common uh, errors is to actually use abbreviations of trade names. Uh, and those should not be used. So for instance, ALK for alkathene shouldn't be used. Alkathene is a trade name for the first generation of uh, plastic pipe, fairly common in the UK. Uh, HPPE should not be used. It is not a strictly a material, it's simply high density polyethylene, just marketed by a particular company as H high performance polyethylene i.e. HPP, so shouldn't really use those, go to the generic pipe material. Uh, really there should also needs to be a two-tier system with pipe materials, with some of the pipe materials, so for instance PE can come in various 
uh, uh, levels. So the, there's medium density and high density, the most common. So, uh, but generally speaking, those should be PE, and then you should have this designation that tells you whether it's high density or medium density. But if you haven't no, if you don't know what they are, then PE is adequate. PVC also comes in various forms, unplasticide, modified, uh, molecularly orientated. So again, as a generic uh, material PVC, but then with uh, subcategories within that. Um, cast iron, again, can come in spun, vertically cast, can be lined or not. So that helps enormously in standardizing the display on GIS helps support things like national mains failure database, helps retrievals be more reliable and makes analysis consistent. The book itself is set out in a number of chapters uh, that, with the titles here, which cover in the whole field of leakage, uh, non-revenue water loss management. So it's not just leakage management, it includes apparent loss management. I'll quickly go through uh, each of those, uh, pulling out odd things. Uh, water resources was added simply because, generally speaking, leakage, non-revenue water becomes an issue really when there's shortage of supply, which is then driven, a shortage of supply is driven by the uh, deficit between supply and demand. Um, so I thought it was appropriate that I put water resources section in. Uh, so it covers demand and headroom. Um, intermittent water supply uh, was covered because that's a very critical element in uh, water loss management. Um, and I introduced a more formal sort of designation for rotational supplies. Um, although I think it had actually been used by people in, in, the, in the water loss group um, uh, less formally. So it matches the 24-7 nomenclature used by customer service. Um, so, for example, if you have a network where the supply is four hours a day, three days a week, then the designation would be four oblique three. Um, the supply time uh, should always be expressed in hours per day, and that can be linked to the supply time designation. So, four oblique three would have a supply time of four times three divided by seven, which is uh, days in a week which is 1.7 hours per day. And then this is used in the calculation of a number of performance indicators. There's a fairly large section on assets, such as service um, distribution network assets. Uh, there's the assets themselves, the service reservoirs, the pipes and valves, of which we have many. Uh, one of the most difficult areas was connection. You know, the difference between the, the, the actual physical connection onto the, of a service pipe onto a main, um, that's sort of referred to as a tapping point and be that a ferrule or a tapping T. Um, service, term, the terminology for the service pipe itself, this is where it had to be pulled away from the UK who use uh, other terminology in, in general use. Uh, so there's the public and the private sections, and then there's the issue of the above and below ground parts of the private service pipe. Um, and then we get into the issue of uh, numbers of connections versus numbers of properties, and things like shared connections and common common supply uh, pipes with multiple connections. Um, and so a, a number of connection uh, figures were added to hopefully help with that. There's a section on flow metering, 
uh, covers different types of meters, uh, insertion, uh, full bore, and then electromagnetic turbine or ultrasonic. Uh, different areas of application of metering, starting at the top of the system at the distribution input meters, uh, DMA meters, and then revenue meters. Uh, draws out the difference between calibration and verification of meters uh, and uh, gives you definitions for a number of the pieces of kit which are helped with uh, reading of meters such as the loggers and pulse units and then into the uh, area where we're moving into the moment of automatic meter reading and smart meters and a uh, bit difficult area and possibly different people have different views. Uh, uh, difficult, one has to be a bit careful of the marketing because I think nearly, <clears throat> if you're not careful, all manufacturers will call their meters smart in order to try and make them marketable. Um, there's a, a section on the standard water balance. Uh, this is critical to leakage management. Uh, it's a relatively complex area and it's been, it was subject to a number of iterations and perhaps on re, um, revisiting it, uh, it's perhaps been oversimplified to go back to the original version uh, plus one or two amendments and perhaps it needs to be revisited in the light of comments that I've received and some other reference documents. Uh, the document gives definitions for the main components of the water balance and it introduces naming conventions. Um, we're stuck with real losses, although physical losses is, is also fairly commonly used, uh, particularly by the World Bank. Uh, and again, we're stuck with apparent losses, although again, the commercial losses are used by the World Bank. Uh, we're stuck really with real and apparent simply because they are in such common usage now by uh, the water loss uh, specialist group. Um, it covers the issues to do with estimating unmeasured consumption and the terminology around some of the uh, approaches used for that, such as small area monitors and individual household monitors. There's a section then on leakage management, the whole process of managing leakage, uh, covering uh, pressure management, repair, leakage detection and renewal. Um, and it, it, um, it gives definitions for a lot of the sort of structure that we put in place to help us monitor uh, and estimate leakage, such as things like the zones, uh, district meter areas. Uh, it, we go through then the definitions involved in uh, the estimating leakage, such as uh, integrated flow estimate of leakage compared to the night flow method of estimating leakage. Definitions of the difference between ups, what are called upstream and downstream leakage, although I think uh, quite a few in the editorial panel don't haven't particularly use those that terminology before. Uh, two terms which are in fairly common use, not sure that the definitions are stuck to religious, religiously. Uh, it's top down and bottom up estimates of leakage. And then uh, legitimate night consumption. It also then covers aspects involved in interpreting leakage. So things like uh, the operability test it may be common uh, in some places where uh, both the integrated flow and the night flow method are used. Um, uh, the operability test being used to try and check the data integrity and data quality. Um, 
it covers the un uh, estimate of the unavoidable background leakage. But in some respects, when I was doing this, I've some uh, preparing this presentation suddenly realised really that in a couple of areas, I wanted only some of the definitions in terms of metric units and perhaps uh, needs to be extended to include uh, imperial units. Uh, covers uh, a concept called infrastructure condition factor and then goes on to discuss things like our uh, definitions for burst frequency and the natural rate of rise of leakage. All fairly fundamental concepts for uh, understanding leakage. Nope. And then uh, leaks, and I suppose in, in, in essentially, we would think them being simple. Uh, but in fact, there's one or two terms kicking about. Uh, burst is used fairly often, and also break is used fairly commonly, particularly in uh, Northern America. Um, but basically, uh, standardized on leak. The problem with burst is different countries have different definitions and even different co companies will have different definitions as to what they will class a burst. Sometimes it might be a large leak, which is causing, causing damage. Some might be just simply a large leak or, or a leak on a large diameter main or something like that. So rather than involve those sorts of issues, stuck with leak as being the uh, standard uh, term for loss of water from a from a pipe or fitting or what have you. Then we got into another very difficult area as to classification of leaps. Uh, there are things, different people use different classifications like <clears throat> visible and active and reactive. Um, um, there's now uh, those that are reported in from customers or, and now we're getting software which will give us alarms for leaks. So um, basically, um, I've, for, from a point of view of leakage management, what is quite interesting, or the, the more interesting thing, is how, categorizing a leak by how long it runs. Um, basically, uh, a, a leak which runs for a short time I'm we're suggesting is classed as a reported leak. Now that may be visible, but it may not be visible, but it, it may be causing somebody a supply problem, a low pressure. May not be visible, but an inspector comes out fairly quickly, usually the same day, finds that in fact the low pressure is being caused by a leak, finds it, and it gets into the system for repair. That is uh, runs for a short period of time and is classed as a reported leak. <clears throat> On the other hand, uh, anything that runs for a, a, a long time and requires an active leakage control survey to find should be classed as an unreported leak. So that may be, in strictly, it may be a, a um, uh, surfacing uh, in a farmer's field a long way away, but he's not aware of it. Um, but, and so it's found when an active leakage control survey is carried out. So that's classed as unreported. The thorny problem of alarms, particularly with modern software systems, generally speaking, uh, if a, a leak is found by an alarm, is identified by an alarm and then uh, the lead detection section go out to find it. Find it quickly that same day, uh, then that should be classed as a reported leak. Um, where do leaks occur? So there's, they can occur on mains or services. A whole new world came, in, came into my uh, vocabulary with the terminology of appurtenances uh, for 
things like uh, uh, I've even lost, forgotten it already. Um, and then fittings such as bends, appurtenances, I think, are the vowels and pieces of kits that are attached to parts. Um, the durations, uh, we covered that in that section. This is the, the fact that we analyze how long leads run by three categories, awareness, location, which might include the response time, uh, due to an active leakage control survey and repair. Uh, there's then uh, a section on lead detection processes and techniques uh, that covers the surveys, a pure reactive survey, um, or it may be a proactive survey and otherwise sometimes referred to as an active leakage control survey. Um, terminology that we cover, localization, location of a leak, pinpointing the leak. An area of interest that was open for debate a bit was, should we use area of interest or point of interest? I think point of interest is, is fairly common, but um, I tended to prefer area of interest because um, Mr. Hamilton kept uh, pointing out that quite a number of the piece processes and the pieces of equipment used only give you an area of interest to within, say, two, three, four, five meters. Um, and that really can't be described as a point of interest. Uh, it's an area of interest. Uh, some of the techniques used in uh, the lead detection process, such as a pressure zero test, uh, step test, intrusive and non-intrusive lead detection techniques. Um, and then uh, definitions for some of the basic equipment that's used, such as correlation, correlators, acoustic loggers, which are now coming in different forms, permanently deployed, lift and shift, correlating acoustic loggers, um, sounding equipment such as the manual sounding stick and the electronic sounding stick, some of the more esoteric, uh, well perhaps some people, gas, gas and then ground probing radar, dogs are being looked at, although I have to admit that is not in the, uh, in the, in the uh, but it's quite good to mention and to have a photograph. Uh, and then the move into remote sensing of leaks using satellite, drone, or planes. Uh, there's a section on leak repair and another section on uh, mains rehabilitation. Um, leak repair, just definitions of circumferential and longitudinal repair breaks and the repair types used for those. I did manage to find a photograph uh, of my colleague uh, Ken Brothers in Canada keeps telling us that we shouldn't use plastic pipes for peace terms and I can fully appreciate and understand that but to change the industry is going to be exceedingly difficult. Uh, but we did manage to get a photograph of a plastic pipe being used as a piece through. Um, uh, mains rehabilitation covers pipe condition surveys uh, and then terminologies for some of the more common and basic systems for uh, rehabilitating service and mains, be that flushing, cleaning, swabbing, or relining or replacement. Uh, pressure management, obviously a very significant of element of leakage management. So it covers definitions to do with uh, uh, fixed and variable path, discharges, and uh, the indices that we use, the factors N1, N2, N3. Uh, hour day factor, there was a bit of a debate toss up on that. Should it be night day factor, T factor? Our day factor was 
decided on as it relates leakage assessed in one hour to leakage assessed over the day. Uh, Covers transients, which we know are a significant problem in causing uh, leaks. Um, and then the terminology used in monitoring pressure, such as critical point and average zone point. And then covers uh, the types of pressure reduction, fixed outlet time, flow modulated, critical point modulation. So it gives definitions and brief description of those. Uh, there's an area on leakage modeling now that we're uh, uh, getting into, we can understand leakage that much better. We understand the mechanics and the relationships. We're able to do computer modeling for that. Um, and uh, most common element of that is a component loss model, sometimes referred to as a bay model that originated as a bay model. So where it relates leakage to pressure, uh, active leakage control and mains replacement, things like that. So that one can develop a model uh, that will explain leakage and you can play with what, what if scenarios on how it would change leakage. Um, hydraulic network models help us particularly if we are designing uh, pressure management schemes. Uh, so that's covered, and also the concept of the economic level of leakage and how that can be modelled. The section on a panel loss management, it's very easy if we're not careful to just think of our real losses, but a panel loss can be very significant uh, in some places, depending on the type of meters that are installed. So uh, customer meter inaccuracy or meter under registration MUR is covered. Uh, the definition of MUR is aligned with the definition of MUR in the ISO, which uh, is given here. It just means that MUR is the actual volume minus the measured volume over the actual volume. Whereas I think we tend to, if we're not careful, uh, divide it by measured volume. It does mean that MUR then lies between minus 100% and plus 100%. Uh, so that, that's quite good. Um, and also you could, uh, though I don't think many people do it yet, but you can introduce the concept of the economic level of apparent losses and look at the rate at which you should do surveys for things like illegal connections, theft, bypasses, tampering, etc in order to control apparent losses. And you can look at the, what is the economic interval of carrying out uh, that. It's common to do uh, the economic level of meter replacement, but not necessarily the surveys for theft, et cetera. And then uh, performance indicators, useful for inter and intra-company benchmarking. Um, uh, there's uh, in apparent losses, uh, there's a definition for a, uh, oh, sorry, for non revenue water. You basically recommends losses per connection. For apparent losses, uh, aligns the definition with uh, the uh, definition of MUR and then moves on to real losses. Um, is an area where we've done quite a lot of work and it's still ongoing. Uh, common ones are losses per connection, losses per length of main, infrastructure leakage index. They're all covered. Um, measures have to be corrected for the period when the system is pressurized. And that was relatively new to me and I don't think I've been particularly good at explaining that. So I think it needs another revisit I think basically come out of the, the, the maths is correct, but it's just the way it's explained is not very good. Uh, the concept of a pressure management index is, uh, is defined. And then uh, looking at burst frequencies to look at things like 
uh, normalization of burst frequencies so that you can compare burst frequencies between companies and or between areas within a company. With a bit of luck, uh, with using performance indicators, then perhaps all your losses will come downwards, just as in the last diagram. Uh, and then just two small sections at the end on financial and information terminology and technology. Uh, so in terms of financial, uh, just the definitions for value in the water for economic analysis. So for real losses, it covers the marginal cost of water and also the marginal value of water. If in fact you're wanting to do leakage uh, control beyond uh, the uh, marginal cost of water in order to avoid the cost of building a new water resource and reduce hydro. Uh, uh, and then uh, the economic analysis of apparent loss carried out against the marginal cost of revenue. So um, that those are defined. And then uh, for allocation of expenditure, uh, operational and capital cost is defined. And then there's just a short list of information tech IT systems, which are, are often used nowadays to support um, businesses and which then provide very useful or fundamental information for you to carry out um, leakage and water non-revenue analysis. So those are things like geographical information system, the work management system, customer contact system, billing system, possibly a waste management system if you're in an area which progresses uh, leakage on the private side of the network. And um, it, uh, there are uh, quite a few now leakage management systems which have become almost enterprise systems linking in with flow data, pressure data systems, but also most of the systems mentioned above uh, so that you can get a holistic view of the network management um, on your system. So just some housekeeping problems on the final slide. Um, publication, it's a reference document for use within the water loss spe specialist group community. Um, it needs to be alive and updated and comments are welcome. Uh, and some comments have already been received. Uh, if you wish to send comments, I will include my uh, email address there for comments. Uh, it's been translated uh, into other languages. It's already been translated into Chinese and it's been translated into Romanian as we speak now. Uh, it's available through IWA Publishing, who's uh, strictly hold the copyright. It's been provided uh, thanks to the Water Loss uh, Specialist Group as an open source document, free to use and access, and it's uh, managed by the Water Loss uh, Specialist Group. And uh, the, it's available at that web address given at the bottom there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Uh, as you can probably imagine that after looking at what Dave did was, was, was an excellent document and it was incredibly difficult to, to get everybody from around the world to sort of see if we can get a common terminology, which uh, we had lots of discussion, lots of heated opinions and uh, uh, what we should use and, and how we went. So, so like Dave said, we tried to cover every single thing in the, in the book. Uh, and the download is available and the link was put into the email that you received to join this, this, this webinar. So Dave, we do have some questions. Uh, it's been translated into Romanian currently on, I know Chinese was released this week. How, how do they go about getting it translated? Because we've got some other people asking, can they have it translated uh, to their language? How do we do that? 
Um, it's it's relatively easy. Uh, we have to we have a contact within IWA Publishing who we inform, uh, and he tends to then. So I pass if they contact me, I pass on their details to um, uh, IWA Publishing. They will contact them and just establish the linkage um, and process. So uh, if they contact me in the first place, and then they'll be put onto IWA Publishing. Um, so uh, it certainly with the, with the two that have occurred so far, that, that has occurred very quickly. At least then we can keep, we have knowledge of where it's been translated, plus the link person uh, that we need to contact for that, for that uh, document. Yeah, so somebody just passed a comment as well. Using the, the lowercase l for litre, uh, obviously when you're using 11 litres, it looks like <laughs> one, one, one. So, my, so my advice would be 10.9, but obviously we, we're going we're gonna to hit these issues. Yeah, it is. It's a difficult one. Um, I, it's, uh, I think in the end you toss a, toss a coin, don't you? Uh, uh, I suppose if uh, I, we, I think we felt that um, the small L is more common uh, if we were if we were wrong in in taking that. Um, and, uh, so that with a, quite a few of these, there aren't any of uh, simple answers. Yeah, somebody else has asked, can we use? SIV, which I guess is system input volume, input volume. as a performance indicator. Uh, do you mean as a, as a percentage of SIV? Is that what they meant? No, no, you just said, can we use system input volume as a performance indicator? Uh, well, uh, it's just. Uh, so SIV, to my mind, isn't particularly a performance indicator. It's just simply a volume. I know if there is a problem that I have got, I, um, I did have leakage as a performance indicator. Uh, I suppose um, uh, I don't have SIV uh, as a pure volume as a, a performance indicator. Um, so I don't, I can't quite see why you would particularly use that as a performance indicator. Um, I, I know when I'm, when I, I would recommend when you're monitoring, when you're monitoring losses, a bit like that last graph, perhaps I, sh I should have two downward arrows on that very last graph on the performance indicator slide. Um, when I'm monitoring uh, this one in the, I should have been using this. Uh, when I've been, when I was involved with monitoring leakage, a reduction of losses, then I did, I did monitor uh, system input volume at the same time, and made sure they were both coming down in tandem with each other, because. If you don't, you're on the risk of kidding yourself that you are reducing losses and leakage, but in fact, you're not. You're fiddling the numbers if your system input volume doesn't come down at the same rate. Okay, you, you, you mentioned AMI as well, Dave, just to, if you can explain what, what you mean by that. AMR. AMI. Oh, AMI. Uh, there was, and, and AMI was included as being um, uh, the infrastructure be behind automatic meter reading. So, um, uh, AMR is often referred to just simply the meter or, or the process of automatic meter reading. Um, AMI is the infrastructure behind uh, a, a automatic meter reading so that the numbers actually get to within to the company. 
Okay, Dave. Uh, I think that's I think that's all the questions anyway. So, uh, thanks, thanks, Dave, uh, for for what you've what you've done. Okay, I'll uh, try and come back and join the.